In this video, I will be showing you how to customize your notifications message format to send just the specific details in your message that make the most sense for you. In the previous video, we set up this notification for the equipment downtime caused by no operator. And for the format, we are just using the global default email format here. As a result, when our notifications were generated, we received a message like this. And this provides us some basic information, like for example, what was the name of the event, as well as things like the start time. But there might be some other information that we would like to include instead. So I'm going to show you how you can customize your formats. To do this, we are going to go ahead and pick our specific notification rule, which in this case is this particular notification rule template that I'm working with. And this is all done under manage formats for our particular notification. So right now there is this global default email and if we look at this message here, we can see that this format is actually read-only. So we don't make changes to the global default email here, but we can go ahead and copy it and use it as a template, which is something that I will do here. You can also start from scratch using this button here to create a new format. So in my case, let me go ahead and rename this to Equipment Downtime Event you will notice that I am now able to make some changes. So let's go ahead and start with modifying the subject. And the information that we can include in our notification could of course be type free text, but there is also over here on the right, all of the additional things that we can simply bring in. Like for example, properties of our AF server or database, or the notifications as well as things from the event frame or the element templates. So let's start with the subject. I'm going to go ahead and start here. And the first thing I want to do is put the reason that this is occurring. And in my case, the reason would be no operator, but that's actually the value of the reason code at the start time of the event frame. And I can get that attribute if I go over to the event frame attributes and actually pick the reason code. So I will go ahead and bring that here. And again, essentially what we are doing is specifying event frame attributes that we want to bring in. We could, for example, include their name, their values, as well as a timestamp. So this is all information that we can add to our notification. And the way we add it is you can see I have basically selected one and dragged it over. So let's keep working on the subject here. So reason code, which is going to be no operator. And now I would like to go ahead and make this section save the path of the element. So I'm going to go ahead and add that by going to our element templates. And one of the properties of our element template is the name. So I can do the name, but in my case, I want to do the whole element hierarchy. So I will pick the path. So I will select and I will hold and I will drag it over just like that. And I can do all of the configuration in the same manner. So now I'm going to go ahead and change the body of my email so that it is exactly in the format that I want it to be. So I have just about made this notification format exactly the way I wanted to. Basically, I ended up bringing in information not only from my event frame attributes, as well as just the properties of the element like its name and path. So these are all things I was able to add as well as specific event frame properties. And in addition to using the select and then drag and drop technique that I taught you, there is actually one more thing that you could do. If you have the cursor in the body, you can actually pick an item and double click on it and that will also add it. And the one thing I just added was this event details hyperlink that is really helpful if you want people to be able to look at a visualization of the event with a web browser. In addition to customizing the text and the content, we can also do custom formatting. In my case, maybe I want to bold specific items or have them be highlighted in a specific color. Once you are finished and everything looks good, you can also go ahead and use the preview options if you want to see how it looks. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. 
Now, just because we have created a new format, that doesn't mean that our subscribers are going to receive that format. To configure this, we will need to go to edit subscriptions. And right now you can see that we have the global default email selected. But in my case, I want to go ahead and change this to our new equipment downtime email. So I will go ahead and make that configuration change. And then I'll go ahead and check in these changes. All right, so now we have changed the subscription format and you might have noticed that while we did have that new format available when we went to edit subscriptions, that's only going to be for this particular notification rule template. However, you can actually set up global formats like the global default email that we saw. To set those up, that's actually under tools and then global formats. So this is where changes could be done to the global default email if you have the appropriate permissions. Or you could go ahead and create a new default global format. And again, there are similar options here, but keep in mind you won't have the event frame attributes or the referenced element attributes. These are something that would have to get added for a specific event frame but you can still set up a global format for some specific information that's important for you to get included in any notification and make a copy of that and add on to it in a given notification. In the next video, we will look at how we can go ahead and actually customize who receives the notifications using groups and things called escalation teams. Thanks for watching.